Hey guys, welcome back. This is Joe's Architect and today we are going to be automating all of our circuits with XNet and then we're going to be making an applied energistic system and learning how to transfer items over. So I hope you guys are ready. So today we get to jump into applied energistics full on. Okay, last episode we really sort of pushed ourselves to getting the, the inscriber set up and get the uh, inscriber semi-automated. Well, last episode, I was in an older version. I was in version uh, three point or 4.0.3, I do believe. And this version is updated. Um, as you can see, of course, with my bar not being centered. Um, it is updated a little bit. Also, some of my, my wall of stuff has been uh, changed as well. I always bring that alpha all the way down because I, I feel like it just, you know, clogs up the screen a little bit more. Having it open like that, I just, I prefer it that way. Some people don't like it open like that. It makes it hard to read for them. So um, it, all, it all depends on you. But in that version, there were so, several changes and there was a mod added. So we now have AE stuff. The, the thing I mentioned last episode where I said it it's not in the pack, it's now in the pack. <laughs> so, of course, it would be the episode that is right before this that I said it is not in here. And, of course, it is in here. Also, this got reset, unfortunately. Um, this has all of, I'm assuming, Darkosto's um, saved recipes in it. And mine got reset, unfortunately. But that's okay. Um, we have now the pattern encoder. We have the crystal growth chamber. Even though I don't remember if the pattern encoder is necessary anymore... Um, this thing is great because it allows you to make recipes without having the items in your inventory, which is great. Uh, whereas Applied Logistics wouldn't let you do that. But I th I remember seeing a tweet where the dev said that he was going to add that because people were asking because refined storage allowed you to do it. I don't know if it was done. But speaking of anything, the advanced inscriber is the best thing ever. Um... And we're going to go ahead and get started with it. Um, even though the advanced inscriber actually requires power from AE2, um, it is a wonderful thing. Also, the wireless connectors are a beautiful thing in themselves as well, allowing you to move your AE system all through your base and uh, having AE systems all over the place, which is great. So what we get to do is chop all these down. We don't need this setup at all anymore, which is wonderful. Um, so we can completely wipe all of this out, take all of our stuff, of course, fix our uh, our blue walls. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys like using um, like me using amber as a building material? And is that is that something that you guys may have thought of? I have no idea. Oh, and it looks like some of the advancements may have got a little bit wonkied. As you can see, we are getting new advancements, which means potentially some of our advancements might have changed. Um, this one still is missing for some reason. Um, ah, we're, it's now this says we don't have Interman seeds. Um, what else do we have? Which is weird because we've already completed this page, as you can see here. So some some weird things are going on with uh, with their page, but this is also a beta. Um, it's intentional, so things are things may not be fully ready. Um, this might be pushed into release though, but we should be able to get all of our all of our quests here by breaking this down. So with that uh, advanced inscriber, setting this thing up with uh, with full automation is not going to be hard at all. Um, and I really want to do that. So let's go ahead and make the advanced inscriber. Um, it is going to require a couple of these printed, which means we actually have to make a couple of these now that I think about it. Um, where did I have this? I had it here and here. I hope this gives it power, right? If not... That will give it power. There we go. Um, so I do need to kind of semi-automate this. I need this to go here, that to go there, and that to go there. We're gonna need uh, two of these. I only need, let's see, I mean, I can, I can do one of each. I can have five advanced inscribers, and then I can fully automate this with XNet. That would be an option. Um, and it looks like that uh, clicking your items in is fixed, where it doesn't just click anywhere which is great. But yeah, we're going to fully get into Applied Energistics, but like I said, we have to get this part done. And I want to convert this system over into Applied Energistics and maybe use simple storage for other things. Look at that. Advanced Inscriber. Oh, it's beauty. It is a beauty, but 
we are gonna need something from Applied Energistics itself, and that is an energy acceptor. So good old energy acceptor, let's make you. And this is going to need external power. Um, so we can get that power from here. And I'm just gonna use this as an example. This isn't where I'm gonna set this up, but this thing should now have some power. It says sleeping because it's not using anything, but it does use AE power instead of RF. Um, now, what we can do is take like, uh, what would be a good example, the logic press? And we can just throw a whole stack in here. And this thing can get a lot more um, speed upgrades. And yeah, we can actually lock these. If we want to lock, we can actually lock these specific recipes and it makes it a lot easier to fully automate these systems. And that's what we're gonna get set up. Um, so I'm gonna go over just a little bit of XNet. <laughs> that is a big, it's a big mod to cover um, and, and can be quite confusing for some people. So I'm gonna do my best to, to explain it. But the advanced inscriber is what I'm gonna make. I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of the five. Um, that should be pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this because I can do this now. Look at this, put stacks at a time. That's how nice that is. It'll actually hold a stack at a time and function. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of the advanced inscribers. I'm gonna make five of them. Uh, that's very specific for a reason. And uh, yeah, I will uh, be right back. So when it comes to XNet, this is kind of what you want to have. You wanna have your controller set up and then you just place your connectors on to the machines. Um, and I'm using advanced connectors here. They're, that's not necessary to use the advanced connectors, but the advanced connectors do allow you to be able to uh, pull out of any side, I do believe, of that block, which can be very handy. Um, so what I have here is a advanced connect, also advanced connectors let you connect to both sides. Um, but let's take a look at XNet. This may be daunting to a lot of people. Let's go ahead and just start clean where this thing is at. So you place your controller, you give it some power because of course it's gonna need some power. I have an input inventory and I have where I want things to be outputted. And this is where I want the final product to be. And down here are our processing machines. So I went ahead and put the inscribers in each one of the slots. At least this one is a little bit different. This one's not actually uh, where it needs to be. And I, I left everything locked like it's supposed to be. And yeah, I have each one. And then on these individual parts, you can actually specify a name. So I did silicon and then in. So this is silicon and it's uh, also an insert chest. And I did that because for some reason you can't specify both connectors, I don't know why. But you know, you, you win some, you lose some, I guess, for compactness. So I can, I can hover over these and read each one. And if you wanna double click on the block, it'll actually highlight which one is in the list which is also really nice. Um, but what we need to do first is create a channel. And sometimes energy is a good one. You can actually send energy through these cables if you want. And so you can have a central energy source that's connected to the controller in some manner. Say a cable is connected to it in the distance, you know, it doesn't matter. This thing will actually transfer power to all these machines if you want. But of course I have mine underneath. Um, and you also have um, mechanism gas, which is added because mechanisms in here. You have open computers, um, connections, which I don't exactly know how that one works. You have the XNet logic, which is like redstone. And then we have items uh, and fluids. So you can do all of these things with this. So let's go ahead and create a channel and we're gonna name this insert. Or I guess main insert, um, because we're gonna be pulling out of this chest and inserting it into our machines. This is gonna be the main goal. So here is our input chest. So what I need to do is, is click on the channel on that we just unlocked, which is going down in this, this row, and we're gonna click create. Then we're gonna set this to extract. So anything that goes into this chest will be extracted in this specific channel that we're in, and we can manipulate the items, uh, you know, depending on what we're sending them into. Now, the only one that I don't want to send items into just yet, except for one, except for one, is the final here. Um, this one's gonna have a very specific thing that it sends, and that is going to be redstone. So, redstone will go into this chest and needs to make its way into here. Everything else shouldn't be messed with, right? 
We should only be able to insert redstone. You can see I'm clicking. We can only insert it into the only slot that it can go into. So with that being said, let's go ahead and set that first. I'm gonna go ahead and create a channel. This is gonna be insert, and then we're gonna set a whitelist for redstone. This by default is a whitelist. And then we do have some tags. By default, it's open to everything. If you want to match metadata and match MBT, you need to make sure you do that. For some of the items in um, Applied Energistics, you do need to make sure those are checked. And for some ore, you need to make sure they're checked. I, you know, For the most part, making sure they're checked is probably a good idea, right? Um, and then if you want to make, make sure something's ore dictionary, say there is multiple different types of redstone in your pack, that work is redstone, you make sure to or dictionary it so that they this can be uh, pulled out and put into it if you wanted to. But this is technically set right now. So this whole setup is basically done. What we need to do now is go to our other connectors. So these are gonna be very simple. These just need to be set to insert, right? So create, set to insert, and then just leave them alone. They should function on their own and we shouldn't have to worry about anything with these. Um, and then priority, nothing to worry about. Now what you can do is you can change the number of ticks for each operation. So we can raise this or we can lower this. So I can set this all the way down to number of ticks per operation um, to five. And then we can actually set this to stacks of items or individual counts of items, or you can do a single item at a time. I'm gonna set it to stack. That's the fastest this pipe can go and should work. We, got, we can also do round robin and order if you want to. Um, I'm going to leave it on first. I think that is going to be just fine. It should find the first and then move on to the next whenever it's not done. So this technically should input items into our system. To test this out, I am going to throw in some gold. It should land only in this slot. Throw in gold. Looky there. It ended up in that slot. Now I want to test multiple things. Let's go ahead and get diamond and gold. And let's make sure they both will work. So if I throw both in, they both get pulled out and they both start processing. That's exactly what I want. Awesome. So let's move on to the next channel. I'm going to go ahead and create another item channel. Um, you probably, yeah, I think that you can't do this all on one channel. Um, you're probably going to separate the channels. It just makes it easier to understand. Our next step is going to be extracting from each of these, except for the final, and inserting into the final. So we need to create this. These are all gonna be set to extract. Very simple. I'm gonna leave these on single. This doesn't matter because they're only gonna create an item at a time. And then we need to insert into here. So let's go ahead and create, and we'll set this to insert. That should be very simple. This whole next step should start inserting into here. Now we do need some of this printed silicon in here or silicon and that is going to be made when we go to actually make our parts so that works just fine now we can specify on here that uh we can specify also if we have some left over that we can just put some printed uh, silicon in this chest and it will pull it out for us automatically so that is something else that we can do we can also specify if we have these extra parts so say we, have, we already have printed silicon there. We already have printed calculation and uh, the diamond. We can also specify that we wanna put this in this chest. So that's probably a good thing to do as well, is just to make sure that each one of these are in there. And we can match MBT and MBT, or match data and MBT data, because these do have different values. So with that being done, this should be almost ready to go. All we gotta do now is say on a new channel, extract and go into our output chest. So over on XNet items, we're gonna create another channel. I hope you guys are able to follow along with this. I'm trying my best to do it as simple and explain it as best as possible. We're gonna set the output, which is this chest right here, or this um, machine, which is gonna craft our final set. This is gonna be set to extract, and we're gonna leave it on single. Everything should be fine. That is only gonna extract the output, and we need to create a channel over or create another um, section here and that is going to input what is extracted from the final it's going to be input into or inputted into the um, output chest and other than that 
that should be about it. Oh, look at that. It's already being processed. So if we feed this items that are needing to be processed, it will do it, right? And it will make sure they all get done properly. Um, so even if these are here, this should, whenever there's nothing else in here, we'll make sure this is automatically getting processed. So what we can do is we can grab a bunch of redstone and we can make sure redstone is supplied in here. Very healthy amount. That will always make sure that's there. And then we also need some silicon. If we don't have any, we can make sure to make some, which we're gonna do later on. So there we go. And I can also throw those in there, that way they head into it. And that technically is set up and fully automated. This whole thing should work just fine. And we shouldn't run into any snags. Guys, that is the automation process fully done way easier with the lovely XNet setup. And now that we have the advanced subscribers, it's so much nicer. Oh man, automating this is way better. Now, if you want to cover these up, you can actually make facades. This is the beauty of XNet. You can actually make these facades and we can make this, I think, look like air. Can I? Um, block, okay. Sneak right click on a block to mimic, right click or sneak right click the cable connector to hide. So that makes it look like cobblestone because that's the default. Um, but if you right click on a block, you can actually make it look like that block. Sneak right click on a block. The facade is now mimicking that. I think, I wish I could do air, but let's see. I wish there was like an air block. Is there an air block? No, there's not. But you know what? We could probably use this amber. So it's like now mimicking amber. So if we place it on here, it is now mimicking that amber look that we get. And it just completely covers the whole thing up. I, I absolutely love that, so. We can grab some more amber, why not? And just make this whole thing look like it's just floating. <laughs> uh, just, just pretty cool things you can do. Um, so if you wanna incorporate XNet into your builds, be sure to use facades, they do make things look way better. And if you ever wanna access your cables, all you gotta do is hold either a facade or another cable, and it allows you to see your actual cables that are inside. Um, and you can even act, interact with them with while holding it. Um, or if you know where they're at, then you can do that as well, but usually you're probably not gonna know. So now that this is done, let's go ahead and make an applied energistic system. So now that I've given my stuff time to process, which actually didn't take too long at all, things are looking pretty hot. We have a lot of processors that are ready to go. Um, so diving into applied energistics, full on, we really don't need much. This is a super, super simple thing to do. And there's no channels, which means we don't have to worry about controllers. We don't have to worry about anything at all. This thing is going to be super simple and easy to set up. So all we need is, uh, I'm gonna go with one drive for right now. I'm sure I'm gonna have to make another one. Um, but this, the drive holder, the drive bay is going to be what we're gonna use right now. And I need to make myself an ME terminal, which is gonna require some Fluix stuff. So you're gonna need to craft yourself some of that for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and get 32 or so of our different uh, cores. And same with this, we're gonna get 32 of those as well, or 34, whatever. I'm fixing to use one anyways. And we need to make herself a panel, which is gonna require some quartz glass. I think we made some earlier. And craft that up, that gets us an ME terminal. And then we need a workbench in here as well. So good old fashioned workbench. Yeah, wood. I'll be I'll be ready whenever the uh, the crafting shenanigans that go on inside this crafting grid are over. Because that's one thing that applied to energistics does fairly well, is it it pulls things out and cr lets you craft them, um, a lot better than this thing does sometimes. Um, so now that we have this, all we need is our cable and the drive, and we need to make some cells. Um, so some good old cells. Now there are the extra cells is in here. 
So if we just do cells by itself, you'll see that we do have these extra cells. So these go, f these basically take the place of once you hit 64K, it goes even higher. So we have 264K. Then we have 1024K. Then we have 4096K. And then we have <laughs> way more than K needs to be there, right? Uh, I don't think I don't think you need sixteen thousand three hundred and forty k. That's just such a weird number, um, but that is the top tier for that. And then we have some gas storage cells, which are really nice. Um, and that pretty much concludes the uh, the extra cells part. What we're really focused on is just getting all of the random different items that we have into our system. And to do that, I'm just going to use um, some 1K or maybe 4Ks. We might do some 4Ks, but I do know we have a lot of random different items. So pulling out a lot of this is a good idea. So I went ahead and pulled that out. I did use a lot of my Fluix. I don't think we need any more for the 4K. These literally just require the calculation. So that'll get us several of those. What are we needing in the middle? Ah, it's just some more glass. So yeah, we should be able to handle making some 4Ks. And I think 4Ks are probably gonna be our best option. Um, so we can technically put 10 4Ks inside one of these drives, but I'm gonna probably make the 15 that exist here or 14 that exist. We'll use this later on for something else. But let's go ahead and make these 4K drives. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That is gonna be just one drive full of 4Ks. And I think 4K is going to be enough for us to, to at least get started. All right, so back to Applied Energistics. We do have the Energy Acceptor that we are going to need to make. And if we take a look down here, I think I still have some materials processing. Ah, oh, maybe not. I did go ahead and upgrade these to the max. That was actually fairly simple to do. All right, and what are we missing? Okay, so I do have one crystal. So I should be able to make that. There we go, there's our energy acceptor. Awesome. So getting power to the energy acceptor, I think a GPS will work. I think. If we just plug a GPS directly in to an energy acceptor, I think that should work, right? So what I wanna do is I want to have my drives placed in a very uh, particular way. I think right here is where I want my screen. I wanna be able to, to come up here and bam, there's my screen, right? So what I'm gonna to need to do is have an energy acceptor sort of kind of hanging out in the back for right now. I'm gonna put a drive up front connected to that energy acceptor. Actually, what I'm gonna do, break this, let's take a look at something that's even better and that's hooking it to an energy cell. Um, because using an energy cell, we're gonna need eight of these by the way. Um, I'm gonna need pure nether quartz, don't I? Oh man. Let's take this and some sand. And we'll make a few of those. This can be put inside this factory and that is going to go ahead and produce those for us. Um, but yeah, I do need eight of these energy cells so we can upgrade this to a top tier. That is gonna store power for us so that, we, that way when we're putting items in, we don't get that little power hiccup that you may experience every now and then. Um, and I'll, I can, I can kind of show that, but I'm pretty sure you've experienced it before if you haven't used backups or power backup for your system. Um, so yeah, having an energy cell is like a must have, right? And we're going to make a dense energy cell. So this is just going to require calculation and a few of these guys. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and grab these. There is five. We are missing just a few more. Come on, just a little bit. This guy doesn't really have any upgrades, so it is pretty slow by default. But believe me, you're gonna wanna have a bunch of these, or not a bunch of them, just, just enough, right? What else am I missing? Did I drop something? What, I'm missing Fluix. Oh man, all right, so. In that case, we need some mineral and redstone stat. And yeah, we gotta put this over here. 
I gotta get that cooking up. We only need two <laughs> for right now. Put that crusher to work. Now this thing does have, um, I think it's eight energy upgrades and four speed upgrades as of right now. There we go, awesome. So that's gonna create our energy cell. Man, am I ready to get into the Blight Energistics. I've been in the simple storage for way too long at this point. <laughs> um, all right, so next, like I said, we're just doing this. We have our eight here. Let's go ahead and create the dents. Just like that, and there's our dense cell. Perfect. So now we can go back up. We'll use our energy acceptor to our advantage. There we go. I'm gonna place the energy acceptor right down here. It's actually gonna be hidden. So we'll set the GPS on that. Then we can place the dense cell, and that's where everything will connect. Now there are no channels, so you can connect as many things to your machines as you want, which is absolutely awesome. Over here, we will set uh, whichever one has the least amount of things in it. Go back up. Eventually, we're going to have a nice little teleport to here, so I'm not going to worry about too much. But we can take our glass and place our screen. Now, a, a weird thing that you guys may not know is you can actually take this cable and you can dye it a different color. So if you want this cable to be red, you can make it red. So let's go ahead and make some more cable. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna show you doing that. Let's see, we should have some more in here. It's gonna get eventually I'm gonna learn my learn my building. Alright, so like uh since we're in a blue room, let's just make it blue colored. And that's gonna give us some blue ME cable. And if you didn't know this, which a lot of people don't, you slap this cable on here, your your actual terminal will take on the color of the cable. Really cool, right? So right now we have no drives in here. So let's go ahead and fill those bays with drives. There we go. And we currently have no power. Okay, so I was worried about this. This was the thing I was worried about. This not actually accepting the power. Hmm. So I guess what we're going to need to do is the other method. I'm going to, I guess, well, I wasn't really wanting to break that. Hmm. This is a structure piece. That's not good to break either. I guess we're going to be stuck breaking this. So yeah, I'm just going to hook up that, uh, that GPS to a power cable or energy. Energy cable. The weird things. All right, GPS. By the way, I've been going back and I've been removing the GPSs that aren't linked anymore. You can do that by clicking on the question mark button. It'll show you if it's linked to anything. So if it's linked to nothing, like this one is now, it'll say zero error and you can just remove it. And then you throw it back in your system and use it for later. That's what I've been doing. So this energy acceptor should now work. All of this trouble. All right, so that should be connected, and then that should now get power. There we go. Plenty of power. Things are hooked up. Now we have access to our actual terminal. All right, so I, I like to set this to JEI um, synchronized auto in keep, so that way we can just remove this whenever we first go in, which is really handy sometimes. Um, so we can start storing items um, into this. Now, I'm gonna show you a quick and dirty way to get all of your items from your chests that you've been storing things in, which is down here, how to get all of these chests full of stuff, like all of this, into your system really fast. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna get an import bus. Because you're gonna import into your system, right? So if we use an import bus and we use some of that cable, we should be able to import. Now, what I recommend is some speed, or um, what is it, acceleration cards. Um, yeah, you're gonna need some acceleration cards. I recommend making four of these if you can, if you can afford it. Which I mean by this point, you totally should be able to afford it. They're just super cheap diamond cards. Four of those, bam, those are acceleration cards. 
This is going to get fun really quick. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this. Pick it up. That huge chest, we can fly with it. There we go. And find our system. And I'm just going to place it right here. Because what we're going to do is hook this cable up. And then we're going to hook the import bus into it. And then we're going to slap those upgrades. And this bad boy should start draining very quickly. And it goes exponentially fast. So you're going to see as it's pulling these items out super fast, it's eventually going to hit a point where it just zooms through them. I, I don't understand why, why it does this. But you can see it just starts to pick up more, more speed as it goes. And eventually it just clears the whole thing out super fast. I don't know why it does that. But it does. It's kind of weird. But yeah, that's the quick and dirty way to store all of your items from your from your simple storage network that you've been using into here. Now, we are going to use these filing cabinets. Don't get me wrong. Those filing cabinets are a must-have for most of our stuff. Um, and is going to be a necessity. But this is definitely a quick and dirty way of doing this. It just it works so good. I do need to get some storage for those cobalt, though. And it's probably some of that glass. I don't know. Having this storage is way better than any of the other methods that we've been using prior. Um, so maybe having drives that hold these specific materials might be even better. I don't know. I think we're going to come up with some uh, better storage solutions very soon. I know filing cabinets are wonderful. Um, and having these go directly to filing cabinets is going to be a great thing. But there isn't such thing as a filing cabinet controller. So really, we're stuck hooking up a bunch of export bus or a bunch of uh, storage buses to this thing. So we do have something called a storage bus, right? And the storage bus does exactly what you think it does. When it works exactly the same way as this link cable works. So we're gonna have to find some kind of common ground or some kind of way of doing this. And what we might end up doing is taking this system and turning it into an auto crafting system from which we just take these massive amounts of resources and we auto craft them into their amber counterparts or their material counterparts and we we do the ore processing for them so that way we have a continuous flow of items always going into our planet logistics system which would be very nice so yeah now we have all of the same materials that we've been using you know, for a while, but we now have it in a terminal. Now, I don't know if there's the wireless. Um, there is the wireless terminal, but is there a wireless crafting terminal? Uh, that's going to be the only thing. The only downside to doing this is using this. Hmm. Now, with that being said, I wonder. I don't. I don't think it would do that. I don't think it would allow me to do that. Would it? Would it, if we hooked a simple storage network directly to this ME drive, that that shouldn't work, right? So, simple storage network, if we take our current setup, which I can, I can always throw this back together. Right now I'm just going to break it for the sake of science. This should not work. Should. I, I say it should not work. Doesn't mean it won't work. But it's always worth trying new things. So place these things together and place that there. Okay, so that doesn't show it. Okay, good. <laughs> good. I was about to say, if that actually worked, that would be insane. But yeah, there's. I don't think there's a way to view this from this network. But that would be really nice if you could. Unless you guys know of a way, which I know there's IO ports. But I think they do different things. They do totally different things. But anyways, I know we have interfaces and things like that. I don't think an interface is going to be what I'm looking for either. I don't believe. All right, so an interface. Yeah, we're missing our iron. So we're going to be missing all of our main materials until we get those things hooked up. Now we can run ME cable 
all the way over here, and we do have facades that we can use. But our best bet is probably to, to move these filing cabinets into a better location, and maybe using wireless item transfer to transfer these items that, are, that we're producing from here into our system that will sort up there. I don't know. We have some stuff to work on in a future episode. But anyways, guys, <laughs> this has been super, super fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you learned something, you guys know what to do. Click that like button. Um, and also, if you haven't subscribed already, I highly recommend doing so. We are a massive growing community at this point. It's absolutely unbelie unbelievable. And it's all thanks to you guys. Guys, I will see you in the next episode. As always, you know what I say. Thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,